and welcome to today's video. Today I thought I would do a slightly different video to usual. I was going through my blog post from previous years and I realised that one of my most popular blog posts a couple of Januarys ago was actually talking about how I clear up my makeup collection. Admittedly I have so much makeup and I'm a little bit messy that a beauty clear out is essential for me probably about once every two months but I wanted to have a big big clear out going into 2016. My friend that actually helped me said that I was in the right mind frame and I got rid of loads which makes me so happy because as I've had my blog for so long the amount of makeup I have is almost a little bit embarrassing but I thought I would share my tips and tricks and just tell you how I organised my makeup collection for 2016. Now obviously clearing out your makeup collection depends massively on the size of your collection. If your collection is quite large like mine is, I would actually recommend you ask a friend to come and help, which I know sounds crazy but honestly it takes so long and ah oh, like motivation goes like meow really quick. And not even demotivated, just really, really bored. And I think having someone to help you um, helps you stay on track and also kind of gives you that second opinion. But I'm sure lots of you are happy to do that by yourself or your makeup collection is only in like a makeup bag rather than in loads of drawers and all over the house, like mine is. The first thing I like to do is clear an area to lay everything out. I have to, have to, have to have somewhere that can kind of sit down and think about what I'm actually getting rid of. But if you've got a little makeup bag, the kitchen table or a desk is absolutely perfect for this. For me, because I have drawers, um, I either use my floor or my bed. This time around I use my bed and it just works perfectly. I just clear out my bed. I usually lay down a towel and I would recommend doing that because you just never know a makeup product could break. And you don't want to stay in a duvet or anything like that. I like to start drawer by drawer and I kind of separate my drawers. So for me that works well. If you've got a makeup bag then it might be worth se separating all eyes, lips, skin, all that sort of stuff. Which will allow you to compare what you've got against each other and really decide what you want to keep and what you don't. The easiest thing to start with in my opinion is things that are expired. You don't want to keep Keep them. I am kind of in two minds about this because for example my Urban Decay palette is I assume like strictly expired. I've probably had it for about two to three years but it's powder and a lot of my collection I buy as an investment and if I'm having to replace it every year and a half it's not really an investment. With stuff like mascara if I'm in doubt I always just bin it. Even lip glosses if I'm not too sure I just get rid of it. I'll have a blog post linked down below which I wrote um, kind of mid last year about expiry dates which will hopefully help but typically lotions and creams and mascaras, anything that's wet and not powdered expires way quicker than powdered items. Foundations kind of like a year, mascaras three to six months um, and then powders in my opinion are kind of like two years. But check that link out below for my opinion on individual products. And for me in particular, something that I definitely want to get rid of is items that break me out which sounds stupid, like why do I keep items that break me out? But Bourjois and YSL both do incredible foundations, which I love, but both of them break me out. I must admit, I still did keep one or two YSL foundations because they're high end and I kind of love them. But I got rid of all my Bourjois foundations, the concealers and the powders don't break me out, so I kept those two. All my other Bourjois foundations went, and it's just so nice to kind of have the free space and like, what's the point of me keeping a product that I'm not going to use? Which leads me to my next point, getting rid of items that you just don't use. We've all done it, like bought the wrong colour of something or been given something that just wasn't quite right and ended up keeping it, which is silly, it just clutters up our life. Um, I know I do this massively. What I do, oh, and this is so bad, because of my blog, I occasionally get sent sets of lipsticks. So for example, I had maybe over 20 Clarins lipsticks, about 15 um, Rimmel lipsticks and obviously not all the colours are going to suit me so I had to sit down and really go through each individual colour and decide what I wanted and what I didn't want. Well I wanted all of it but what I was going to use and what I wasn't going to use and in the end I ended up only keeping like four shades of each range but they're colours that I genuinely like and I will genuinely use and it's something I'm going to try and do continuously because just before I filmed this video I applied a lipstick and bear in mind I had had a clear out but there was clearly a lipstick there that I wasn't sure about.
to using it if you have loads of lipsticks and you'll always come back to your favourites even if you have um, other options but if you're still in doubt and you really don't want to part with it, try it on. If you don't love the colour, don't keep it, get rid of it, give it to a friend, someone that will love it and will actually use it. Then again, only for people like me with slightly larger collections is go through and divide up each individual colour. If you have 15 red lipsticks, you don't need 15 red lipsticks. So just keep a couple that you really, really like and get rid of the other ones. I'm sure your friends will really appreciate a new red lipstick for the new year. The one thing that I really did struggle with is that I have a few items in my collection that are a little bit sentimental, which might sound silly for loads of you, but, but clothes and makeup really kind of spark something when it comes to me. For, for example, perfumes that I'll no longer use, but I still kind of like to come back to every now and then for kind of nostalgic reasons. And then um, limited editions, which I've never used, but I just want to look at and what else for example i've got an urban decay palette that my mum bought and i remember going with her to buy it and it was probably one of my mum's most expensive makeup purchases for herself and i remember we agreed we could both use it um so yeah, that's quite sentimental to me and i just i really don't want to part with it but we've probably had it for about six years so that lived in another drawer a drawer that i never go into but i wanted it in my collection i still wanted to own it i didn't want to part with it or throw it away but i moved it away from my other palettes because i didn't want to um, I didn't want to get in the way and cluttering up my palette drawer. So then organising is quite important. Again, it completely depends on your collection. For me, I use some drawers I bought from Ikea and then I keep a separate drawer for everyday makeup um, or items that I'm trying. But I just like to clean everything and put it back. I clean the drawer a little bit and then if you've got some makeup products that are quite well loved, it might be worth getting some 95% alcohol and spraying that into your powders. It will evaporate really quickly as long as your alcohol percentage is high enough and it disinfects all your products really, really effectively. Now, I actually had a clear out of everything. I only filmed my makeup, but I had a clear out of perfume, skincare, hair care, everything. I really just wanted to start the year with less clutter. I gave loads of hairsprays away, which I won't use. And I also went through and saw what products I was almost finishing and put them to the front of everything. For example, perfume. I had a couple of sprays left and a couple of bottles. And they just take up so much space. Hairsprays, I had like an embarrassing amount of hairspray started. I think like 12 hairsprays, which I'd started using and weren't finished. So I moved the almost finished ones to the front so I can get rid of them really quickly and clear up some more space. I won't be buying hairsprays anytime soon. Um, I definitely have enough and I probably won't be buying too much makeup anytime soon, if I'm honest. Other thing I did and I would definitely recommend doing is washing your brushes. amount of brushes. I washed them. I've, I'll link a video below on how I wash my brushes but I also went through and had a clear out of them. There were brushes that just weren't looking as amazing as they used to and there were brushes that I just didn't need. I just don't need 18 flat foundation brushes because I usually use a buffing brush. Um, I would still want to keep a couple but just ones that I really really love. It just means that next time it's easier to clean it, and clearing out your makeup collection just means that next time um, you need to look for your favourite lipstick or actually find it quickly and it's just such a good feeling. But that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a little bit different for me, especially because I feel like I didn't have to like pick up products and show you. Um, but I hope my cutaways were good enough as well. It's really hard to film cutaways for a video that you haven't actually filmed because you're not really 100% sure what you're going to say and what you're going to need. So hopefully And somehow, and I have no idea how, there is quite a big gap in my lipstick drawer which hasn't happened for ages because I had the lipstick drawer I have now and an extra lipstick drawer elsewhere and they were all kind of overflowing. Um, so I'm very impressed by how much I managed to clear out. I managed to clear out two whole bags, which like large bags, which is impressive since a lipstick really isn't that large. 
But thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed it. I'll leave lots of links below to how I wash my makeup brushes. Kind of written version of this video which I wrote a couple of years ago. And also my posts about expiry dates as well will be below. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Social media links are also below and I'll see you all very soon. Bye!